The stem is on a ground vehicle. It's just a modular platform. So we can either use it for logistics. We can build many different payloads, like a sensor payload or a drone docking station on top of the robot. So it's basically a multi-purpose platform. For the last four years, five years, we've read the policy papers. We've seen the disruptive technology emerging in the civilian sector, like AI, like cyber, like uh, robotic systems. I think the value in what we do is to um, have the end user involved and to uh, not just believe all the hype of the technology, but to really put the technology into a military operational environment. Therefore, we quickly learn how to make it military robust, uh, military safe, because we have high requirements and high demands to operate in a military environment. Being at the prototype level, we see the first applications, the first possibilities of applying autonomy and unmanned systems. The first is within UAVs, so autonomous behavior for path planning, obstacle avoidance, and in the land domain, it's autonomous navigation. In order to, in the future, operationalize AI-driven systems, uh, many different things have to happen. First, we have to know how to verify and validate AI-driven systems. Uh, therefore, we have a research program with TNO to identify how and who is doing the verification in a responsible manner. Second is uh, very thoroughly testing the AI in uh, a very realistic context. For that, we use simulation. It's testing, testing, testing over and over again so that we have sufficient trust in these systems and sufficient knowledge on how they operate and why they succeed and why they fail before we can think of moving on to operational deployment. We see AI capable of achieving controlled levels of autonomy. Again, with the purpose of uh, decreasing the load at our soldiers. So I don't need many soldiers to operate many robots. I still require the soldiers to develop the mission, to approve the mission, and to supervise the execution by unmanned systems. There's always a person involved in autonomy, and autonomy is a very misunderstood or poor understood concept. It's first a division of the tasking, what an autonomous system should do and within which constraints, that's the domain of the human. The second is uh, how to execute the ordered task within the constraints. And that's the domain of the machine, of the AI. De opdracht is om dit gebied hier vrij te waren van vijand. Ik wil dat we onszelf zo goed mogelijk verbergen. Ja, we blijven in onze formaties. So looking at first at the human domain, the human is in control of assessing the necessity and the applicability of autonomy. So it must be necessary to choose for autonomy. Think of electronic warfare and jamming conditions. And it must be applicable in the context. Now, autonomy is the possibility of an unmanned system to execute a ordered task. So the military commander orders the task for the unmanned systems to, to execute. The AI can help in developing the plan. The plan is presented to the military commander. He can adjust it or he can approve it. And then the plan is transferred to the robot. So the robot is specifically ordered what to do in terms of tasks and conditions and constraints. Then we believe that we have controllable autonomy.